Hey everybody, Zach here with Infernal Tool Technologies. And if you're new to the channel, then this is a channel where we bring people back into the trades. We're looking to have more people that are interested in moving into the trades and making more money. So today we're gonna to be talking about making more money in the trades. That's coming right up. Hey everybody, Zach here with Infernal Tool Tech and today what I have for you is a video on making more money in the trades. And this spans any different trade. You can be an electrician, a plumber, a carpenter, a roofer, you name it. Most of these skills you can learn and it will increase your wage and you can go shopping for more skills out there in the marketplace. So the first phase of this is you're gonna have to hone your skills. And to hone your skills is not only just to hone your skills in the trade that you're good at, but I've learned in my experience that you can become a lot more valuable if you, if you branch out a little bit beyond your own trade. So this one is particularly well for carpenters. So if you're a carpenter and you're doing a lot of interior work, you're doing drywall patches, you're doing cabinetry, you're doing woodwork and trim, it helps you and is very beneficial for you to actually go out and learn some electrical, maybe some minor electrical. You can just swip, swap out some receptacles or some switches, or maybe even running a few new lines or putting a new cut in box. Learning these simple things could really change or also having plumbing under your belt as well. If somebody has a leak under their sink, or just being able to hook up a sink through the cabinetry that you're installing could be really beneficial too because it eliminates that step of having to bring in another trade. So somebody can hire you and they know that you're really well at installing cabinets, but if you can also hook up the P-trap and the drain, that's gonna really be beneficial to the employer because they're gonna have it's gonna eliminate a step that they're gonna have to go through where Otherwise, they would have had to hire maybe another company outside or they'd have to bring another person in the company to that job just to do that, that particular job for you. But this could go on different trades as well. Take roofing, for example. If you get to learn a few other things like bending metal, uh, if you live in a northern climate, then you can trim out windows or even installing windows. That's a lot of people who work exterior jobs actually install windows, which is, is somewhat interior. And that can even meld into learning some drywall patches as well, because when you install windows, you're you, most likely you're going to mess something up or get uh, switch a different size of a window sometimes or put a door in where a window was and you're gonna have to do a little bit of drywall repair and having that under your belt is gonna make you so much more beneficial the employer is really gonna look at you and they're just gonna be excited to have you on their team because you can you you wear many hats and you can solve a lot of problems for them and if you can eliminate problems for your employer you're gonna do really well in this industry because the there's so many fires that employers have to put out constantly, and if you're able to put them out for them, they're gonna be, they're gonna be looking to you for, uh, for giving raises, and if you go to them for a raise, they're gonna be more willing to actually give that to you. Or if you go shopping in the marketplace, you can talk to these people and tell them the different skills that you have, and right from the get-go, you can actually start to make more money just starting out. So honing in on your skills and branching out to other skills is really gonna be beneficial. And if you're just able to take small steps and learn simple things, maybe get a couple books on, even as simple as Home Depot. I have a few books that I've just found thrifting, like Home Depot how-to books. And throughout the years, it's a lot of things that I already know how to do, but it, it's just, it's refreshing to, to read up on these things sometimes and just see maybe a new perspective of how to do something and it'll give you an idea or going to YouTube and checking out some professionals on YouTube that, that show a lot of skills. That's where, that's where I've learned some skills as well. And it's, it's a perfect platform for people who are, are really wanting to educate themselves and further their career and earn more money. So the next thing that I would have to say is if you wanna earn more money in the trades is you're gonna to have to be willing to take on more responsibility. And the way to take on more responsibility is be promoted into different job roles. So if you're just a apprentice or a journeyman and you're looking to become the lead on the job site, 
then you're going to have to learn some skills outside of just the actual trade that you're doing. You're going to have to learn some communication skills. And I actually have a book here to reference for any of you. It is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. I cannot tell you enough how good this book is. I've read it a few times and it just it's some really basic ways to talk to people. It goes through the personality traits of different people and it it goes into how if you listen to somebody and not talk so much, then people are going to be more willing to actually listen to you when you talk. And there's so much valuable information in that book, so I could not rec recommend it enough. But moving on from that, just when you're on the job site, depending on what job you're working, it can be from residential to commercial jobs. If you can make a point of contact with somebody outside of your company, that's going to really benefit you in the long run. If you can just learn how to communicate to a client, that's going to be really helpful because there's you talk to clients differently than you talk to your coworkers. When a client comes in and they're looking at certain things, you got to put that that hat on where you're you're now a professional and you have to talk professionally. You have to limit you got to take your vocabulary and swap it a little bit. You can't put be so vulgar and use profanities because clients do not like that. And it might sound silly, but I'm telling you right now, people are going to respect you more if you start to eliminate some of these profanities and, and vulgar talk out of your vocabulary. And it's going to benefit you, uh, benefit your wallet as well. You're going to be able to have some more money in the bank because people are going to trust you more uh, to just be more respectable and be uh, a person that they can rely on in the field to talk to their clients because you could you could turn a whole job the wrong direction if you're just giving them a very poor experience. The business could sell the job perfectly, set the job up great, give the customer everything they want, and then the tradesmen could come in and just ruin the whole job just because of the way that they're talking. And if you're able to hone those skills, your communication skills, and when you're talking to clients, it's it's really going to be good for you because you might learn some stuff as well that if you down the road want to start your own business, these are going to be skills that you're going to have. They are going to be essential for you to start your own business. You're going to have to learn how to talk to clients and talk to them professionally because they're only going to buy from you if you sound professional and know what you're talking about. So practice that, maybe read the book and just really hone that skill of talking to your client. But on the flip side as well, if you're able to talk to your coworkers better too, that's going to benefit you because people are going to look towards you as the lead on the job. If you're able to keep people happy and accountable at the same time, then the your your um your employer is going to actually look to, to you to have more responsibility and they're going to pay you more because you're getting you're again putting those fires out for them. If there's problems in the field, people are having an argument or people are not showing up on time or having problems in their life outside of work, if you're able to communicate efficiently enough, then you can actually change the course of the day, the week, the month, the year of these job sites. And that's going to be a fire that you're putting out for your employer. And like I said, all these things are going to make them pay you more. One big stigma in this field is that, uh, Every, per, every person that is in the trades is just a drunk or a drug addict or they're just messy, disgusting, vulgar, and that just isn't the case. There is obviously those types of people in the field and that's never going to change really. I think there's a lot of those people in all different kinds of work, but if you're able to kind of branch out from that stigma, then there is more money out there. And I think something as well that I know personally, I've worked, I work with a lot of older men from their 50s, even into their 60s, and some in their 40s, and they've gotten it in their head that they can't make more money. And that's, that's really bad, especially with the way that our economic system works. 
we are just inflating the money supply and we are actually devaluing the dollar. So if your wage is not increasing, then you are actually getting poorer. So it's, it's very important for every person in the trades listening to this video that you should be valuing your skill and getting more money for it. And if anything, yearly, you should be getting more money to combat inflation. And they state that it's 2%, but as we all can probably see from the news, and if you do a little digging yourself, it's a lot more than 2%. So minimally, we should all be making 2% more on our wages every single year, but I believe that it's more higher, closer to 10%, even exceeding 10% in the year of 2021 right now. So we should all be getting raises to compensate for that. And I don't think they're coming down, but that's for another video maybe. So if you could really show people your value and be able to communicate to them efficiently, even before you get the job, if you talk to the employer properly, they're gonna bracket you in a price range. People just do this naturally. When you're hiring somebody or you're looking to somebody for what their wage is, we bracket them based on how we judge them. And we judge them by the way that they communicate to us, by the way that they present themselves. And if you could really button down on the way that you communicate to people and the way that you present yourself to people, there is a lot more money for you to get in the trades. There just is. A lot of people are leaving money on the table. I, I know it. I see it every single day. People are not getting paid as much as they should be. Really, really skilled people are not getting paid as much as they should. So learning to be a leader, to communicate like a leader, is going to benefit you so much. It's going to give you more value in life. You're going to provide more value in life and you're going to get more money in return. So I touched upon this a little bit and it's, it's very, very important, but it's the way that you dress. So the skills are going to be a huge part. If you are bringing in money for the company, then they are gonna compensate you for that. If you're bringing in a lot of money for the company, they're gonna compensate you a lot for that. But as we trickle down this list, these are still some important things that you need to keep in mind. Dressing the part is essential. I've fallen into this myself where you know you're gonna get dirty every single day, so you put these clothes that aren't as presentable on because you tell yourself, what's the point? You're just going to get caulk on them. You're going to get paint on them. You're going to get it dirty, tar, whatever your specialty is. I'm sure there's some sort of material that is going to get on your clothes. And it is a cost. And unfortunately, it can be a very steep cost as well. If you aren't clean then, and you're careful when you're doing work, like especially tiling or something like that, it's very easy to just ruin your clothes and you can burn through clothes. But I'm here to tell you that that's just part of what comes with, with the job. You got to make sure that you keep up on your clothes. You got to constantly have good shirts. If they get a little too dirty, then you got to, you got to recycle them. You got to get rid of them and you got to get some new ones. Pants, you can't have rips in the knees. You can't have rips in the pockets. They can't just have gunk all over them you're you're a not going to feel good but also you're not going to look good and you're not going to look good to the customer you're not going to look good to your employer and you're not going to you're not going to look good to yourself because i know for me uh when i get a fresh pair of clothes work clothes those are those are the best days ever so why not why not make that happen more often and this is all what goes into making more money if you make more money than you can afford to have a little bit of that cost go towards better clothes. And it's just all part of it. it. A lot of industries work this way. If you're in the fashion industry, if you're in the acting industry, you gotta keep up on the way that you look constantly. Fitness industry, it's just, it's just a cost that goes into what you're getting paid. People expect you to look a certain way and you have to live up to that. But I'm here also to tell you that people don't really expect everybody in the trades to look super presentable so if you can make that a point to look very presentable every single day then people are going to look to you as 
as the person, the go-to person. You're communicating well. You've got the skills to back it up. You maybe have some skills outside of what your job description even is. And then you're dressing the part as well. You're, you're smelling good. You have your teeth brushed. You got all the clean clothes on. You look good. People are going to come to you and they're going to pay you more money. And the final thing that I want to just bring home is confidence. It wraps all these up into a nice little basket because all these things that you have, you can have really good skills, you can be a good communicator, and you can dress well, but none of them are really going to lock it in unless you gain some confidence. Confidence is key to all these things working perfectly. The way that you communicate to a potential job offer, if you're confident in your skills, you're confident in your communication, and you're confident because of the way that you're dressing, then that's gonna, it's gonna rub off on the people that you're talking to, and they're gonna see that. They're gonna want to pay you more because they see the confidence that you have. They don't want somebody that's gonna be second guessing their work or second guessing the way that they're gonna talk to somebody or second guessing the way that they dress and look and how they're presentable. And this can be a very difficult one. I don't have a reference for you, a book or a video or anything, but I'm sure there is just a plethora of books and videos out there for gaining confidence. And the best thing that I can say for gaining confidence is just to throw yourself at it is you just, what's the term? It says fake it till you make it. I'm not a big fan of that term, but in some regards, if you're able to fake the confidence, then you will actually acquire confidence over time. I truly believe that because I didn't have a lot of confidence when I first started on the trades. And once I started gaining a little bit of the skill and I was starting to communicate to people better, and I was caring about the way that I dressed, it, it locked that in as well. I was able to communicate better and I was able to do it more confidently. And that really, just all those things wrapped together, just skyrocketed my career, opened so many doors to me in the trades to where people want you to move into different positions, they want you to do more for the company and they want to pay you more. So let's just go over these simple facts again. One, if you're going to want to excel in the trades, then you got to hone in on your skills and maybe think about branching out and learning some other skills around the trade that you actually do. Two, you got to learn to be a lead. You got to be a leader in the way you communicate to your coworkers and the way that you communicate to the clients. And you have to be a leader out in the field. You have to direct people into what needs to be done. You have to know what needs to be done and you have to efficiently guide people into getting that done and that's not a skill that comes easy but is definitely a learnable skill so number two learn to be a leader and learn to communicate and number three is to dress the part make sure you dress the part that's the easiest thing that any of us can do is we can dress the part every day we can get up and put nice clothes on and look good maybe shower if you shower the night before, that might be your thing, but think about showering right before work. It's going to make you feel good. And it's going to make you look good. And then the fourth thing is confidence. Wrap it all together. Confidence is the key that is going to just unlock these wages for you and just unlock so much more money for you. So if this video brought you any value, then please hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. It really helps me to get out there. And I think this is a good message for everybody in the trades. They need to hear it. There is a dire need for people to hear this. I come across people every single day who are not making as much money as they should. And wages are creeping up on all these other jobs and they're just not creeping in when it comes to the trades. So again, if you like the video, please. If you don't like it, hit the dislike button, but at least leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. If you got good thoughts, then help me out. Tell me about other things that worked for you or let me know if you are using this and if it has changed your life in any way. I'll catch you guys on the next one.